So, old man, you get your daily dose of Bigfoot videos done today? Oh, yeah, man. Don't even get me started. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mid-journey video. Let's take another deep dive into this AI platform with a clear focus on one big question I keep hearing. How can you make a longer video? Because Mid-journey quietly added a very special feature for exactly that. And it's worth looking closely at what they call Extend. Here's a quick overview of what you'll get in this tutorial, so you know where we're heading. Step 1. What exactly is Midjourney Video? Step 2. How can you create a longer film? I'll show you four ways. And Step 3. A challenge run with some very unusual images. Now let's move on to Step 1. What exactly is Midjourney Video? Other platforms like Kling, Hilo, or Runway offer a whole range of individual modules that link together. You'll find camera settings, multi-elements, reference layers, or ready-made effects. But that's not how Midjourney works. Midjourney keeps things refreshingly simple. You get three main functions, auto animation, manual animation, and extend. To keep it short, auto means, hey AI, you handle this. And manual means, step aside, I'll do it myself. On top of that, Midjourney lets you choose between low motion, which is a more subtle execution, and high motion, which, in my experience, simply adds a bit more dynamic camera movement. So how do we actually do this? First, create an image in Midjourney and pick one you like. When you hover your mouse over that image, you'll see the animate option appear. My tip here, click on the image to open it up so you'll see the animate image buttons in the lower right corner with auto and manual. If you just want to test it quickly, click on auto, preferably using low motion. But if you want to control the video generation, click on manual. Up in the prompt bar, your original prompt will now appear automatically. Now it's time to adjust and type in exactly what you want to see in your video. Let me give you an example. Man hops on one leg. Leave the motion low in place because that tells Midjourney which mode you want to use. You can also upload an external image if you like. Just drag it up here into the starting frame field and you'll automatically switch to manual mode. If you want to remove it, simply click on the red X. Quick side note here. If you generate videos in relax mode, which you can change up here in the settings, it's free for pro and mega plan users and it takes about six minutes to process. In fast mode, which does cost credits, it only takes about one and a half minutes. All right, back to the video. You're now seeing this clip here, the man hopping on one leg. Now you have the option to extend your video. Just hover your mouse over the clip and choose either Extend Auto, which runs automatically, or Extend Manual, which lets you adjust the prompt again. At the moment, you can extend the video up to four times, reaching a maximum length of 21 seconds. When it's time to download, there are three options. Just right click on the clip you want and choose. Download for social, download for raw video, or download as GIF. I always use download for social because it gives me a video in 1936 by 1080 pixels. To be honest, I still haven't quite figured out what the other two are for, and that's pretty much it. Step two, how can you create a longer film using Midjourney? I've put together this overview, showing you four different ways to approach it. Option one is pretty straightforward. You generate a starting image, click on auto low motion, and then hit auto extend four times. The result is what you see here. Midjourney focuses heavily on your main subject and carries it through the entire video. It's consistent, which is nice, but do I really want it like that? It's what I'd call a suitcase film. Everything gets packed into one bag, and that's your film. Option two takes a different route. Here I only use manual low motion and extend manual. This means I continue the video scene by scene, adding short prompts based on what Midjourney has already created. What you see here is the result. The platform goes pretty wild and the usability becomes a bit questionable. Pay close attention to the details. The man runs through a bag, horses move backward and turn into people. Or maybe it's the other way around. In the end, repeatedly using extend isn't exactly ideal. 
Option three is where it gets a bit more complicated. I animate a video using manual low motion and then save the final frame of video one as an image. I then upload that final frame as an external image, making it the starting frame for video two and so on. From there, I continue describing the next scene based on that new starting frame. But to be honest, it's pretty tedious. And as you can see here, it doesn't deliver the best results. And that brings us to option four, which I find the most exciting. For each scene, you generate a separate image in mid-journey. In this example, I used a style reference in the look of Victorian London, paired with an omni reference of this character. You then write a video prompt for each scene. This approach isn't just more diverse, it actually adds tension and variety to your storytelling. Another benefit, the first five seconds of each clip are usually very strong. When you stitch these short scenes together, you get the result you see here. All right, time to go all in. In step three, I'm running what I call a challenge run to see if mid-journey can handle complex tasks. On this grid, you'll see the starting image in the lower left, the intended action in the lower right, the manual prompt result in the top left, and the automotion result in the top right. The first test was to see if mid-journey could identify an object and its color. The prompt was point at the blue color. As you can see, mid-journey struggles a bit, poking around with green and yellow. Test failed. Next up is a chessboard. The prompt was move the white pawn from F2 to F4. At first, I was impressed by what mid-journey did in the manual version, but then it fell apart. The automotion version wasn't great either. In another tutorial, I used this colorful ball. The idea here was to test physics, movement, wind, and external forces. Again, the manual prompt gave a better result. The ball behaved closer to what I had in mind, although the sand turned out pretty weird. Now, here's something fun. Starting with this creative guy in a gray suit, white sneakers and blue hair, I wanted him to walk like a pigeon. I saw these birds strutting around while I was out shopping today and their goofy walk inspired this prompt. The man walks like a pigeon. Two more quick examples. First, a camera at water level, meant to dive underwater and show a fish. The manual version worked fairly well, even though the fish looked more like a plastic toy. In auto, I couldn't influence it and it seemed like the camera just didn't want to get wet. And finally, a personal one. I was recently in Iceland hiking the crater ridge of the Kerfetl volcano near Lake Mývatn. It was six degrees with heavy wind, and as I sat up there, I wondered what it would look like if this dormant volcano suddenly erupted. So I tested the prompt. A huge explosion with volcanic ashes, dust and gases, the volcano erupts. In auto, the drone simply flies over the landscape without much happening. And that wraps up this deeper look into mid-journey video. I hope you're having as much fun exploring mid-journey as I am. One side note. Parts of the intro were created using VO3. Until mid-journey adds voice generation, I'm using it as a show element to make the hook more interesting. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for listening. See you soon. Your channel, AI, now you know.